All right. So uh, thanks for everybody uh, for joining us today for another 15 minute feature Friday. Uh, this week, I thought we would look at a partner solution uh, that I was recently involved in on a pilot. And this is a very unique um, solution as this is only uh, the only VMS this is currently uh, integrated with is Milestone. Now, Ariani is on our marketplace, so there will be much more um, information on the marketplace in terms of guides and, and brochures and so on. But I wanted to really look at the steps to actually uh, build the integration or at least configure our VMS uh, to support the integration. Uh, and just do your best to ignore the typo there in the main screen. It is called Smoke Catcher. So what is Smoke Catcher? This is a video analytic that visually monitors for smoke and fire. Um, currently supporting access cameras as an uh, installed app onto the camera itself. And then using uh, another piece of software, the eBridge, which we're going to follow through today, it allows that metadata to be put into Milestone and then allowing us for, to trigger alarms. Um, so this is a bit more popular in Europe. Um, when I look at the list of integrators in North America, it is currently a small list, but I don't think they've been um, really advertising in North America for very long. Um, the pilot that we did was for a waste uh, recycling plant uh, just north of Toronto, um, and it's actually gone very well and looks like it will be cookie-cuttered and deployed uh, across all of the facilities um, in Ontario. Um, so again, if you are looking for more information on the product itself, uh, it is in our marketplace, but again, we're going to focus a little bit more on the installation part of it in Milestone. So when we look at our system architecture, there are a few components that are going to be um, added to this. Uh, number one, it is access cameras only. So this is an app that is installed on the camera itself and is licensed on the camera. So there is no additional licensing, at least that I've been able to uh, identify uh, above and beyond the product on the cameras themselves. Okay. So the next step beyond getting the product on the camera is that extra piece of software, which is called the Smoke Catcher Bridge. This is what's going to receive the communication or the metadata from the cameras themselves and then send that over to our event server within Milestone. This can sit on virtually any machine that has network connectivity to both the event server as well as the cameras themselves. So in a single installation or a smaller installation that's not doing failover, the recording server is uh, the most logical choice. That being said, once you start to introduce failover, apparently you cannot run multiple instances of this software across multiple recording servers. Um, so centralizing it on a management server or on the event server uh, tends to make the most sense. But again, as long as there's network communication on two individual ports, which we're going to cover, uh, this salute, the eBridge, uh, the bridge software will work. All right, now that being said, let's actually jump right into uh, the configuration and have a look what's involved. So we are going to start on the camera itself. Um, installing the app is actually a very straightforward process. Um, in the apps area, you just click add, browse for the correct file, which is provided from uh, Smoke Catcher, and you'll simply install that onto the camera itself. And then once installed on the camera, you will then apply the license. Uh, no rebooting of the camera is required. It pretty much uh, installs fairly cleanly. I've not had an issue with this yet. And then we add the camera or the license for the camera. And once this is activated, we can actually go ahead and start the app running. Now there's no additional configuration done on the camera or within the software. Once the app is running, uh, there's no real visual that tells you other than status is running. But if we jump over into the events section and look at those rules that we uh, can configure here, you will see applications has been added as a trigger. Uh, Smoke Catcher is the application. And there are a series of triggers 
that can be done from the camera side. So smoke alarm, pre-smoke alarm, operational signal, and fault signal can all be added. Um, now it is important to know the names of these as those will have to be added as analytic events inside the management client and it is verbatim, case sensitive, um, word for word spaces, everything, it's got to be an exact match. Okay. Uh, so now that we're done on the camera, like I said, that's all that we have to do there. We'll jump into the software. Now I'm not going to walk through the installation of the client because it's hitting next three times and then you're up and running. So this information across the top on the left hand side will fill in by default, user password and port number. Uh, user and password is just Ariani, A-R-A-A-N-I. And the port number by default is 52123. You can change that, um, but this is how you'll add the MIP driver when we get into the management client. Uh, the event server is the details on where we're going to uh, send this data. So the IP address or name of the event server and the port that it's going to be listening on. Uh, 9090 is the default port, but it is important to remember that this has to be enabled on management client. Okay, so we can go ahead and add the camera right away by clicking add, entering the IP of the camera itself and saving that configuration. Now close state simply means that it is identified that the camera is there and the software is installed, but we're not let yet communicating to management clients, so it's not sending anything. The state is actually closed on management client. It's not super clear from the software that this state is referring to management client. By this, you would think it's trying to connect to the camera port on 5555, that is actually not the case. Once it shows any state, it's actually operational and just can't talk to management client. So now that we have this app running, we'll jump into our management client. And first, we gotta turn that on, uh, port on for the analytic events. So we'll go to tools and options, jump all the way over to analytic events and enable. And you can see the default port is 9090. Um, you can go ahead and specify particular um, IP addresses, and again, this will be wherever the software is installed, not the camera itself. Um, or, to keep things simple, we'll just leave all network addresses and open that up. Now, I believe once that is connected, this will um, cycle itself about a half, uh, usually about every five seconds. And this will eventually come to connected, but it's not going to do that yet until the driver's actually been installed, and we'll do that next. But you do need to remember user password and port. So we will jump to the recording server, and let's go ahead and add hardware manual. So I've already added the username and password, which is again just Ariani, uh, enter twice. And we are looking under milestone for the MIP driver. And remember that port number. This should find it. And once we've added in. Now the only one that we're actually going to care about is port one. Uh, but just for testing, I go ahead and add all of them in. Doesn't really matter and I will add them to their own group. All right, so now that we've got that port installed, we've got all 32 metadata ports installed, uh, the Smoke Catcher software will eventually see it and connect to it. There it goes. So now it is active and it is connected to Milestone, and that's what we want to see. Um, now the next step is to relate this metadata port with the camera itself. So we're going to open up the camera that we've installed this on, which is my 3227, go into the camera section itself, and then go to the client tab. So right now, related metadata is the metadata port on the camera. We're actually going to clear that out and add in metadata port 1 from the MIP driver. Now, you can tell which port you are supposed to add. Whenever you add a camera here, it will uh, sequentially number them. This actually corresponds to the port in the MIP driver. 
So if I added five cameras, I would read what that number is there, and that will correspond to the port with a MIP driver. And as you can see, we have, uh, a, I guess, a limitation of 32 uh, cameras at one time. Um, so once we've made that change, we'll actually connect the two events there. So at this moment, we are now uh, receiving the smoke data or those pre-smoke smoke alarms thing on um, the feed itself, although this really tends to come through on the uh, smart client. But we have connected those two items there. Now, in order to build alarms off of this, uh, the last step is to, again, add in those analytic events. And I've pre-entered them here um, that are exact or verbatim to the events that were that were entered into uh, the access camera. The last step here it will be to enter an alarm. And I've already created one. So all you're doing is going to analytic events, selecting which alarm you're going to uh, you want to trigger the alert for, and then selecting that camera. Okay. And that's really the process for uh, building up all the way to an alarm state. And you can do this for each one of them um, or trigger events based or rules based on loss of signal, uh, fault signal, and so on. Okay. Um, so I'm going to look at a few of the questions that are coming in here. Um, yeah, so can't wait to see what Alex will set on fire. Um, that is a great talking point. I will not be setting anything on fire. Um, one, because my wife will no longer let me because I spent most of this week testing. So I will show you a video from the recycling plant uh, where this was installed and tested. I know. Everybody wanted to see fire. So this is a video clip of uh, the system on the pilot that we did uh, running. So you can see we've added all the overlays in, so operational signal is active. Um, and what we'll actually see is a blast of smoke um, coming from the machinery. Oh, no, it wasn't from the machinery. So the orange boxes refer to the pre-smoke alarm. So it's detected a smoke signal, but has not yet classified it as an emergency. Now the red means that it has gone through the algorithm and identified this as smoke and is now going to trigger that alarm. And these bounding boxes uh, will stay on screen as long as it's detecting what it identifies as smoke. Okay. So uh, before we end and jump into uh, questions, there is, I do have to talk about some of the uh, roadblocks that we hit during this pilot, because I think that's important to note as well. Um, while this is running, uh, and I don't know if we'll get to see it here, refresh this. Uh, so while this is running and the signal starts to come through, uh, we will typically see an error on the top identifying that, and of course, it's going to work perfectly here, uh, but we do constantly get an error across the top saying that the bounding boxes cannot be displayed live because the, the camera or the times are out of sync. Um, this is appears to be either a false negative um, alert that has been bounced back and forth to find out, or if it's simply the thresholds that were configured on Ariana's side that um, don't take into account the process time of the camera itself in order to display them live. Um, I've tested this with two different camera models, neither of them being on their officially supported list, um, which only consists of two cameras at the moment, the P1365 and the P3225. Uh, yeah, uh, Ariana is, uh, sorry, just to bounce in there, Tim. Ariana is fully aware of that, and I've been working with them on this pilot. Um, but we will see this from time to time, that that error will pop up. Um, it, the bounding boxes still show up and will continue to show up, not only live, but also into the uh, recorded video. 
Um, but it uh, it is a bit of an annoyance for the user uh, to see this bar across the top saying that um, these bounding boxes are not being displayed, but it does keep showing up. Um, so that being said, we've actually kind of gone through all of the different aspects and a quick tutorial on installing it. Um, I'm just going to ask, are there any questions, comments? All right, well, it sounds like there's no questions at all. Um, so that being said, I would like to, again, thank everybody for taking some time to join us today, and I hope you guys have a great weekend.